Today on Tea with Treja, our guest will share how she moved from believing herself to be the cowardly lion to becoming the courageous lion. Hi, I'm Treja. Today, Vicki Stamps will share her story of how she went from feeling that she was not enough to stepping into courageously giving away her gifts and talents and art such that she blesses her community, comforts hundreds of children, and speaks to the world. We meet at the Second Street Art Gallery in Crescent City, where Vicki's work is featured. In our series, it's Tea with Treja, we're focusing in on women who have faced challenges and who've been shaped a little bit by those challenges because they reveal the purpose and the dream that the woman is actually made to step into. And the women who are actually stepping into that and how that feels and what that's like and how it manifests. So welcome Vicki well, to Tina you. Treasure. Yeah. yeah. My life has been, I think, like the lion who wanted the courage. The cowardly lion. The cowardly lion, then I found the courage. How and now I'm like the courageous lion. Maybe a <sighs> mini lion. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm feeling but that. But courageous lion. all the same. Yes. yes. Tell us a little bit about who are you? What, what is all of this behind us? <laughs> That's a longer story than you've got time for. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm Oklahoma born, California raised, small town girl, things like that. I grew up thinking I was not very smart. And I certainly was not very clever or talented. My mother didn't do anything like what I do now. But she was a very good person, a very giving and kind person. But uh, I grew up thinking that I all I had in life to look forward to was having a family and a little house and a white picket fence, and that was life, and that's how it went, and there was nothing beyond that. Right. But uh, that changed one day. I uh, became allergic, and I almost died five times in two years from anaphylactic reactions. I had no idea I was allergic to anything. And I can remember waking up in intensive care and thinking, I want to live. Mm -hmm. I want to live. I want more. And I had to kick pride kind of in the behind, and I had to step out, and I had to start doing the things I did. And fortunately, after being a single parent for quite some time, I married a childhood friend. Mm. And one day I said, I sure wish I had my education, because I dropped out of school in the 11th grade. Right. Wish I had my education. He said, go get your GED. So How I old can't. were you? How old were you? I was 32 years old, 31 years old when I got my GED. He said, do it. I said, I'm not smart enough. I can't. Well, I barely passed, but I passed. I got my GED. And I decided I wanted to become a nurse. And I, he said, go do it. Enroll. I said, I can't. And he says, you can. Go do it. <laughs> well, three months into becoming a student, I went to my nursing director and I said, you know, I said, we need two incomes in our family. I said, we've got a lot of kids. And I said, we need another income. I said, last night it was gravy and biscuits for the kids. Mm -hmm. And I said, I don't want that for my kids. I want them to have more. Mm -hmm. And she said, wait a minute, Vicki, you give us a week. We'll see if we can work something out. Well, a week later, I went to leave the class, and I found that someone had jimmied the trunk of my car and filled it with food. Oh. Just filled it with food. Oh. And the anti theft. Yes, <laughs> just the reverse. <laughs> they filled it with food. How many kids and did you have at this I point? had four, and I had six stepkids, but they weren't all with us, just off and on. Wow. So, so a lot of kids. We did have a lot of mouths. We did. And anyway, she got me a grant that kept me from having to take another job. It was enough to help us squeeze through school. Wow. Wow. So I finished school and I worked for 27 years and I got four two-year degrees. Four two-year, okay, wait a minute, four two-year degrees. Yes, So uh, locally. All right, so we're here in Crescent City, so locally would be the College of the Road. That's right. Okay, I just want to throw in here that that is also where I went back to school as a non-traditional student. And I was, I had three kids in tow myself. When I first started, I thought, oh, you know, even at nursing school, I thought, oh, I'm not very smart. These these other young kids make really smart questions up, you know, and I didn't feel like I could do that. But I did well in nursing school and in college. I was making C's and D's the first two times, but the last two times I walked away with honors. There you go. And it really built me up, and it let me know, you know, that I wasn't stupid, that I could do things, that I had opinions, you know, and I could go places. Mm 
-hmm. But it was my husband who said, you can do it. You can do it. Yeah. He says, you underrate yourself, Vicki. You know, you can do things. What's his name? Wendell. Wendell. Thank you, Wendell, right? <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. He's not going to like having his name mentioned, but I'm going to mention it anyway because he has done so much for me. A good man. So, out of school, you're a nurse. How does a nurse with several children in tow metamorphosize into the artist and author that you are now? I think the, th the experiences I had gave me the courage I needed to reach inside myself and to begin to feel things. And if you can't feel things, you can't draw things, you can't write things. And uh, a lot of times people will say they read things they've written and they see me in them. Yeah. But, uh, well, let's, let's look at some of the things you've written. I love this. Uh, see, you getting shine there? Good. For cowboys and them that love them. And what I like about this as I'm reading it is the voice that you're using to tell the story. I, uh, it almost feels channeled. <laughs> That's really sweet. Um, I could definitely sense myself out there in the way west. There's one in there called the Indigent Cowboy. And my father died from Alzheimer's complications. Mm -hmm. And I think that I patterned my father in that because it's about an old cowboy found in a shack and he ends up in a nursing home. But in his mind, every day he goes out to the cattle crew and he rides a horse and he helps out. He has the life he's yeah. dreaming of. Yeah, and it's all in his mind and in his heart. Mm -hmm. And nobody knows what he's muttering about or what he's doing, but he knows and he's been there. So let's, let's take a look back here. All right, so tell a little bit about the artwork here. Well, these small things, I sit around at home and I see pictures and I look at them and I doodle and I turn them into what they are. And it doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to sell those little pictures, but they make me smile. Okay. And I'll never be a Rembrandt, but well, it's I don't okay. know about your, I don't know anybody else who could be a Vicky Stamps, so I think you're okay. Or <laughs> that before too. <laughs> so quilting also. This is beautiful. This is a well, this going into a quilt. Is that it's, true? No, it's going to be what they call a small quilt. Some people use them for the center of their table, like a table topper. Mm -hmm. Some people put them on their walls. Very pretty Good color. It's just it's a small quilt. Well, I make this for someone. Someone makes one for me. Oh, neat. and I do whatever I wish with them. That's kind of well. I like that better than the cookie it's swap like a idea. Bar. <laughs> well, the cookie <laughs> swap idea is not good on the waistline. This is actually something that's you can slippy. keep. This is beautiful. <laughs> Ah, very nice. And so one of the things that you grew over time was a project that you started. Dolls for... Dolls for sick kids. Dolls for, dolls sick for kids. very sick kids. So how was that born in you, that project? Well, I worked in an institution, and there was an officer there who knew I had made a doll and used it to raise funds for the local hospital. And he said, I sure wish you could make me a doll. He said, there's a little eight-year-old kid with brain cancer at my church. He says, and she's got red hair, and she's just the sweetest thing, but she's got cancer. And I said, well, I'll try. And I did. And I made it with red yarn hair, and I left the part of the hair off, because I know children often lose their hair to cancer. And I wrote a little note, and I informed from the doll to the child, and I said, would you please be my mommy? Oh. I said, I need a mama. I said, I'm so sick. I said, I'm losing my hair, and I need someone to love and care for me. And could you please do that? And it's a little longer than that, but I wrote the letter, and the officers got the doll and the letter and took it to the church, and he said they read it at the church mm. and said there wasn't a dry eye in the church. That's and true. the little girl took the little doll, and she just loved it, and she got well. And, and she, she recovered. Well. She lived. Wow. And she got, well, and I assume, oh, and I had put the red hair that I took off the back of the head, and I put it in a little sack. So when the hair grew back, she could put the hair back on the doll. Oh, okay. So, and anyway, that's what I did, and that's what got me started. And it just sort of stayed in my heart. And in 2007, I thought, I'm tired of not having a whole lot to do. i got to be doing something. So I got the triplicate from local paper on the floor, had no table to cut on. And I got it on the floor, and I drew a, a pattern out for a doll, and for the clothes, you know, for boy and girl dolls. And it just boomeranged from there. I took it to the cancer lady, and she said, hey, I can use these for the children. Mm -hmm. And people began giving me donations of fabric, began giving me funds so I could help with the postage, and that's how it all began. 
And then finally, my lungs became so bad that the doctor says, you've got to stop. Mm. But by mm. then, there were 312 dolls that went out all over. They went to, even to Switzerland and to Denmark. They've been. A lady in Africa wants to make the dolls, and I give her a pattern because she said that they have an orphanage full of children that are victims of their parents being uh, HIV positive, and they have no toys to play with. And she wanted to begin sewing dolls so their children had toys. That is beautiful. So that's the story, yeah. the African story. That's a beautiful so story. So I like to think that it's boomeranged, you know, yeah. and people are making these dolls, and they're giving them to children and hopefully inspired mm-hmm. that they can do something. I think everybody can do something. I believe I that. really do. I think we I have that. in it... If it's only visiting their neighbors with tea and cookies, mm-hmm. if it's only making a record of the words so their grandchildren can read it someday, everyone can do something. Even old people in wheelchairs or something, they can write letters to our soldiers. You know, there's thousands of things that can be done. I believe in light, and I believe that as we bring our light out into the world, other lights kind of catch on and it becomes contagious. I like a ballroom. It's contagious. <laughs> and so I see that as being what you've done here with the, this is one of the dolls, back here the last of the dolls mm-hmm. actually. And that's what she is, you know, she's, she represents your light and she's going out into the world. She's awesome. So tell us a little bit about this doll. This is the very last doll and they've asked me to have it here at the art gallery on the second street in Crescent City. So the people can see that they did an article and they said, this is my last doll, and it is, so. Mm-hmm. Anyway, they've meant a lot to me. Yeah. Lot to me. Well, and there's something kind of interesting about these dolls you were mentioning earlier. Can you show us uh, what that is? Okay, I want the children to be able to have a doll that can sleep. As long as they wear a smile. Children don't need frowns. And I love that they have the little hats. Which, uh, you know, it, whether they have their hair or not, they're beautiful. That's right. That's right. She's awesome. If it makes the child happy, it makes me happy. I think we need to take good care of our children. Me too. They're our future. Well, new things that you're working on here, you mentioned... Um, for our grand- great-granddaughter. A for a great-granddaughter. And I just, I love, love, love the pattern. The whales are darling. How sweet. So... What's next for Vicki Stamps? <laughs> well, there's at least two more books. And after that, I don't know. We'll see what happens when I'm 87 instead of 77. <laughs> right? <laughs> Maybe lots more. Lots more. Yeah, right. I know I'm never going to give up, and I'm not going to be doing something. You know. And I knit, and I teach a knit and crochet class. Mm. And <laughs> I had a, a few years ago, they did a benefit using my words, and we raised $1,000 for a battered women's shelter. So that was a good thing. That's so awesome. I've just, you know, the things I've done haven't brought me material wealth, but that's not the big deal. Yeah. You know, it's better to give than to receive. Yeah. And I can be happy with that if I never pay off the mortgage or do other things I want to do. Well, and I'm finding as I'm stepping more and more into purpose and calling that that's not really what I'm doing this for or about, and I can trust that my needs are met as I'm doing that work. And I believe that, I know that to be true, and I really see that in you. You know, okay, we're not famous, but we're doing something pretty amazing for humanity, and there's a lot of satisfaction in that. I think we all need to reach out, you know, and do something. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it ever should stop. You know, I think that there is nobody in this world who's more important than me, and there's no one in this world who's less important than me. Mm -hmm. And if I can do it, starting out poor and hopeless, anyone can do it. Right. It can be done. You just have to have the desire to keep pride in the button. Move ahead. And move into that courageous lion. (laughs) Move into that courageous lion. That's right. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. You're very welcome. Beautiful. I've enjoyed talking to you. Yes, me too. Me too. For cowboys and them that love them. If I were a cowboy poet, I'd make you see grass growing tall on the plains, how it sparkled and glimmered after God sent the rains. Yeah, if I was a cowboy that knew how to write, I'd soon have you seeing the stars in the night. 
You'd even be sniffing some fresh country air and enjoying the breeze that had run through your hair. Thank you, Vicki. And thank you, viewers. If you're enjoying the videos, remember to subscribe. Click on my icon to your right.